uh, and the idea of deliberate discipleship is that we're super intentional. We realize that we're all heading somewhere. We're all heading to an amazing place of being fully complete in Christ, as, as Paul so admonishes the church, that that's the great charge for all of us, as he says in Colossians 1, 28 and 29. But as we, as we look today, we're going to look at one particular aspect of discipleship that sometimes has mixed feelings about it, and that is obedience. Right, so when you hear the word obedience, right, you probably have a, a bit of a spectrum of reactions to that. What are, what are some of the reactions that you get when you hear about, okay, I'm going to be discipled towards obedience? So apparently obey is a four-letter word. <laughs> fair, fair enough, but it is what discipleship has at its heart. And there's no getting away from it, right? I mean, let me just give this a, a bit more of a highlight here. What is it that we do in discipleship but to teach them not to feel, not to be, but teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you? That is an inextricable, integral part of the beautiful growth that we all experience as we continue in our discipleship in Christ. Apparently, there's a little bit of baggage that goes with this, and, and this hopefully will be a, a pretty good time for us together to be able to look the baggage square in the eye, but then also be able to give it some context so that we can embrace the fullness of the elegance and the beauty and the power of Jesus's plan here as he calls us to obey. All right, so for, for us, be, because we are a, uh, I, I would say, at our least, and I mean it at our least, we are an obedient church. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. We do the, the work of Jesus Christ. We get after it. And amen that, that that goes on. There are a lot of places that wish they could have the base of obedience that already exists here in Hampton Roads. Praise God that that's really the case. How, however, there is also a danger in that our entire culture is, is one that can kind of lean on obedience more than it can lean on being absolutely overwhelmed that Jesus poured his love into our life, into our hearts, right? And who, who doesn't want to live a Christianity of a, of a Psalm 18 or it's also 2 Samuel 22? It was like, with you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run up against an entire troop of the enemy. With you, I'll scale a wall. What is it that I wouldn't do? I'm going to run through a wall for Jesus. I'm so fired up about my life in Christ, right? I mean, that's, that's the obedience that I think God really wants. That's the obedience that Paul had. That's the obedience that Peter had. That's the obedience that sent the 12 apostles as we studied them to the four corners of the earth with all of them hanging from some sort of a torture implement near the end of their lives, singing a happy tune. <laughs> Always look on the bright side of life. But... <laughs> And, but that was, that was their lives. That was the, the way that, that that ended. Amen. Why? Because they didn't just have an obedience that said, I think I've done enough. Yeah. But I do. And I think all of us can end up in that place. Yeah. And you, you, know, you know what I mean. And I've, I've used this example uh, before. But if it's just simply evangelizing, I've, I've got a uh, kind of a number in my head. That once I've evangelized to that number, I'm good. But, but if, if I'm not holding to a gospel of grace, a gospel of a Jesus who didn't just give this command, but just a moment earlier bore all of my sins out of love for me, lived an entire life of righteousness, rose from the grave, bestowed upon me honor and dignity, that I should have never been anywhere near, but yet it's, it's the reality of my life, and then ascended to be able to send me the Holy Spirit so that not only do I have this astounding stature, but I also am empowered to have significance because he actually deems me significant enough to be the very solution for planet Earth. Yeah. Right? And obviously I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about this is every single one of us, this is our status. That's crazy talk, but it's the reality of our lives. Praise God. Now, now that's the reality of life. And when I recognize that that's the reality of my life, and not only that, but he has ascended into heaven, Hebrews 7, Romans 5. Why? 
to continually make intercession for my idiocy, for my sinfulness. Right? Not just that he did it, did it once, but he ascended and he's working hard because there's a lot that he has to do to keep making intercession for me and, and for every one of us. But that's my life. Uh, John 1 16, grace upon grace already given. A wave of grace upon another wave of grace upon another wave of grace. And thus I walk through this world with, with dignity and honor and significance. Crazy, but real. And when I allow that to really kind of find its way to the place where it really does resonate, boom, I'm like, yeah, I get it. What wouldn't I do? I'll scale a wall, I'll run against a troop. I'll bring it on, bring it on wild beasts in Ephesus. I don't know what it is, but I'm ready for it. When, when, again, when that fire has begun with the grace of God, rather than the fire that has begun by machismo, which I'm easy, it's easier for me, right? I'm a guy who grew up playing sports. I'm a guy who grew up being stupid competitive. I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who, who grew up with honor and shame that, that I, I was really good at uh, and, and being able to manipulate that for myself and for others, right? I, I mean, I could get after it. I could have grit. I could stay later than the next guy. I could work harder. All of that. It's a lot easier for me to live a Christianity based on that, but a, li a Christianity based on that has a limit. And when I evangelize that seventh person, I'm good. Because then, I'm good. I have come to a place where God is probably not just pleased with me, but might even owe me a little something, something. <laughs> that he's going to answer my prayer. That my kid's faith will be boosted. That our ministry will have a surprise baptism this month. You know, not too much, but you know, at least that much, right, God? I mean, it's your will too, isn't it? But nonetheless, you know how this works, God. I'm good. You, you answer my prayer. Let's, let's get this thing going. Right? But, but once I've hit the magic number of, of uh, outreach, well, then all of a sudden, that's the way I view it should be going with God. But let's say I, I just absolutely cowered my way out of my day. Well, then it's another story. Then I'm in God's debt. He's not in my debt. And, and then I'm not... I'm not like realizing, oh, but thank goodness that he's still making intercession for me right now. Thank goodness I still have this status. No, I don't think any of that. I think he thinks I stink. And the only way that this is going to change is if I get after it. Or, or else I am the displeasing son. Uh, that, you know what? He doesn't hate me, but boy, is he just disappointed in me. Right? You know that I tell you? I'm not angry with you, Melissa. I'm just really disappointed in you. <laughs> right? And that's what we hear from God in those moments. And like, ah, oh, I gotta, I gotta get. But there's no grace in that, right? The whole gospel might as well be torn to shreds. We might as well be a bunch of Muslims. Because that, what I just said, is Islam. Right. Yeah. That is Judaism. <laughs> that, is, that, that, that is Hinduism. That is Stoicism. That is every construct, every, every construct of philosophy under the sun, except Christianity. And if, if Christianity is so radically different, and it is so much more powerful, all of those other movements, by the way, were all contained to their little corner of the world, right. except Christianity. It knows no bounds. It has busted through everything because the power is, is really limitless. Now, now as, I, as I look at this, so, so imagine that we have this obedience meter, right? Right there, that's righteousness. If you can kind of hit that top mark, that's righteousness, that's obeying the commands, and that's, that's pretty good. But what happens on the days, the weeks, where you blow it, right? This is what my week looked like. I had two quiet times. I invited five people. I didn't get any numbers from anybody. Um, I had three experiences of lust. Lied twice. Two of them about the lust. Uh, I, I went to half of the church services. I only tithed at 5%. Uh, and you know what? God, God cannot be pleased with me at this moment. And, and, and if I tell too many people in the church, well, then my status is going to drop. They won't be pleased with me. And I better fix this really quick before our next discipleship group uh, so that this is not kind of who I am in the pecking order of that group when we get together. Now, as much as they go, oh, that's crazy. But unfortunately, because the world, and this is not an issue of ICOC. This is every attempt at Christianity. Why? Because we're in a world that doesn't actually have 
grace institutions. Everything is, if you obey, then you'll get a little something, something. Yeah. Not, not, not any way. And if you don't obey, well, sorry, Charlie. You know, so, so that is what is constantly trying to squeeze our brain into its mold, uh, Romans 12, 2. Thus, it's going to find its way into any stripe or version of Christianity, but especially ours, because we actually do stuff, unlike other versions of Christianity. And because we do so much stuff, it becomes a little bit more of an issue about that. That's not a bad thing. It's, it's actually good because we're doing stuff. Uh, praise God. But now let's say on the other hand, right, you, you, you're having a better week, and you know, and, and now it's, I had seven quiet times out of seven. Bring on the D time. I invited 22 people. That's, that's not just three a day. There was a day where there was four. And they're like, yeah, check me out. I got three numbers. I did lust once, but it, it was like soft porn. Uh, I lied. Yeah, but I don't you know. It's the spirit or the letter of the lie. Yeah. I, I didn't just come to 100% of attendances. I came early. I was here at 158 today. I didn't just tie, I gave 15%. And you know what? I think God delights in me right now. And I, I got a little, a little pep in my step right now. Because I, I have a great God. Well, because I'm a great guy. But I have a great God who rightly views me in a very positive light right now. Okay, this is dangerous. Because this is Islam. This is, you pick it. It's, a, it's any philosophy. This is, this is super dangerous. Uh, and here's the, the why it's dangerous. is because this approach is the easiest approach to get quick results in your own life and in the life of your Bible talk. Super quick to get results this way. And, and you all the different kind of knobs, you have a lot more knobs to adjust and leverage to pull in, 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 this, in this construct to be able to get things going. Here's the difficulty. If we're really going to be like Paul, that I only want to know Christ and him crucified, that, that I want to be foolishness to, to the Gentiles, I want, to, I want to be something anathema to the Jews. If I want to really be able to bring the gospel of grace rather than the gospel of performance to, to bear, well then, it's going to take a ton of trust. And for me, the reason why it's very difficult is because I lose control. I don't have the knobs to adjust anymore. I don't have the knobs in, in, in everybody's life if, if they really are loved and of a great stature before the Lord. Ah, but isn't everybody just going to kick back? Isn't everybody going to be like, well, fine, if that's the case. And we've got to trust that the grace has more power than my faithless thoughts are really giving it at that moment. But, but, but typically when that happens, though, as we live that way, we end up living somewhere kind of near obedience but not really all the way there. It's some place where there's a comfortable uh, set point, a homeostasis, a place where, you know what, I, I think if I, if I live this way, Costica, eh, he'll probably think highly of me, uh, not too badly of me. I'm good with that. Uh, you know what, I'm going to kind of hang here. And, and, and that'll, be, that'll be my level of living out Christianity. Danger of that, that's where I'll stay. I'll never know the breakthrough, and we'll never know the breakthrough of the body of Christ. We'll never know what it's like. And, and by the way, if that's where we stay and we progress a little bit, then great. Hey, we, 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 we grow by 1%, 2%. We, we increase this performance by 1%, 2%. Garbage, right? Who wants that? Who doesn't want the breakthrough? And if the breakthrough that results in an explosive obedience that knows no bounds, that's only going to come in a covenant of grace where you've been given, you get that you've been given, you've been loved, you get that you've been, you've been affirmed, you are his, uh, the, the, the delight of his eyes, you know that this is the case, it, it really is the experience, it has made its way into your DNA strands, your epigenetics have all flipped their switches, you are, you are now like kind of living in that mode, but when that has happened, then the limits are off. The, the scale, doesn't doesn't go that it's it's like what more couldn't I do? I mean, bring bring it on! You you bust you bust the the, the, the gauge itself from, from being able to have real grace. The ga oh look, the gauge broke. I think we should just take a moment to reflect on what we all just saw. And that's where we that's where we want to live, but. Unfortunately, this model permeates everything in life. 
And thus, it makes its way into Jesus' life. If I obey, then he delights in me. And the, the problem with that is that grace does this. It takes it, it moves it to the appropriate place. Amen. He delights in me, therefore I obey. Right. Right? I obey the Great Commission, not because there's a, and then, at the end of the Great Commission, I obey the Great Commission because I'm already baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because I have been called to significance. Because I'm part of the great reclamation of planet Earth. Because I have that stature and honor and, and uh, nobility that, that is about me. My goodness, how amazing is that? What wouldn't I do now that I get that, that my life has such worth to it? Uh, let me jump over to Daniel.